Hi, Trish. I'm Sarah from The Upcoming. Such a pleasure to be able to speak to you today. How are you? I'm great. Hi, Sarah. It's nice to be here. Thank you. Um, maybe you could just kick off with a brief introduction to this incredible film. Um, what can people expect when they watch Sitting in Bars with Cake? Well, I think it, on the one hand, kind of like the name suggests, it's a really fun movie about a couple of uh, young people. They're taking cakes into bars as kind of an exercise to... Um, get more confident, meet some people. And the movie really kind of changes. Uh, it's not what you expect because it actually turns out one of the girls is going to have a life-changing diagnosis and um, things get a little bit heavy. But through it all, it's sort of a joyful story about just living life and friendship and resilience and just kind of going out there and doing it. And obviously it's based on true events. Um, so when did you first come across, I mean, it's a blog, wasn't it originally? And then turned into a book. Um, and I know you're actually working with, with the writer who, who wrote the screenplay and, and adapting it into a film. So how did you first come across the story and what made you think it was just going to work so well um, as a movie? What's so interesting, so Audrey is the writer and she's um, the woman whose, whose story this is. And she did have a blog um, and she had a cookbook also where she would sort of give recipes for the cakes that she invented and baked and then tell a little story that kind of went along with it um, about the types of people that she met and the types of bars that she would go to. And um, that alone just seemed like kind of a great and catchy idea for a story. But as the producers were kind of digging into it with her and learning about her experience, they learned about this incredible ex thing that happened to her best friend, Chrissy, in the middle, like right smack in the middle of this project. And that just seemed like sort of the heart of the entire story. So we kind of ended up hinging this entire adventure around their friendship and this kind of really crazy year that they had in hospitals and bars. <laughs> and... I mean, the cast is just incredible and it, it feels so authentic, particularly the central friendship, so lived in. Um, so so getting that cast right was going to be really crucial. How did you land on Yara and Odessa? And I guess work with them to kind of develop those sort of opposing characters, but that have this really great connection. Um, I love both of them so much and they they couldn't have been the better people to play this role. It just worked out so beautifully. Um, we started with Yara because I've known Yara for actually quite a few years and I've been dying to work with her. And this role just seemed so Yara because it's a lot that she can dig her teeth into, but it's also very much in line with her own very cerebral, profound kind of um, personality. And when we were looking to match her with sort of the perfect uh, Corinne character, we looked at a lot of people. There's so many fabulous actors and there's something about Odessa and they do know each other in real life. They were already friends. In fact, I think Odessa's birthday party, her 20th or 21st birthday party was the first post COVID lockdown event that Yara ever went to. And this is long before the movie was, you know, up and running. And so they were already friends. And um, I think that just helps because they trust each other. They automatically had this sort of chemistry and this vocabulary together. And they were able to just kind of um, uh, like, I think go to places that were a bit scarier and a bit more vulnerable than than you would if you just didn't know and love this person so deeply and trust that they're, they're gonna kind of have your back as an actor. So yeah, we did do a lot of rehearsing and a lot of discussing because I think they're both such smart women and they had so many sort of thoughts about their characters and we talked through a lot of you know when you have one of these friendships I think a lot of women and a lot of people are used to that friendship where one of you is the outgoing one and one of you is sort of the more introverted one and we all kind of know that dynamic it's a very realistic dynamic but we didn't want it to look like why are these people friends you don't you don't buy it so it was important to sort of get the nuances right and they're both so sensitive and so intelligent it was really fun to work on it with them. And even your supporting cast, I mean, seeing Bette Midler, I mean, she's formidable as this kind of, uh, this boss and even the way she looks, um, uh, you know, what's it like having people like her on set and working with her? She's such a legend. And I mean, it, I don't generally get nervous meeting actors or anybody famous, but I was a tiny bit nervous for her because she's just so, she's so larger than life. She's actually like this petite, tiny, delicate little person physically, but she's such a force. Um, and she, she's such an 
absolute pro and she's also so generous as a human being that she makes it very very easy like your nerves around her just I think everybody's just kind of evaporate the minute you meet her and realize she's just ready to get in the trenches and do her job like everybody else and she's she's absolutely lovely and she's so funny she's just funny I mean we're all laughing all the time she's just funny and um you know thinking about kind of the, the time you had on set I mean what I really love about uh, the film is you know the fact that it's going from all these Different, through all these different bars it's like a cross-section of like a contemporary city you know and you're going you know you've seemed like you really lent in to sort of bringing the the color of all those different places to life whether you're in the sort of more like line dancing cowboy style or in, in, in more like drag style um and also all the cakes I mean did you really make all these cakes I and mean, you must have been kind of uh, on sugar high most of it if so <laughs> there were so many cakes. There was so much sugar. I, I, I don't know if any of us got diabetes making this movie, but I'm afraid that I like my blood sugar will never be the same. It was so delicious. Uh, Megan made all of our cakes for us. She's a fabulous pastry chef and food stylist. And we designed all the cakes in advance. We tasted all of them in advance. Um, and then, yeah, we got to go to all these bars. I, you know, I love living in Los Angeles and I feel like something that not everybody who's never lived here, Pe people who've never lived here don't necessarily understand that it really is a bunch of villages and that different parts of town have such distinct feelings about them and different neighborhoods feel like they're from completely different cities. And so we kind of wanted to capture that variety that LA gives because I think people have this image of just strip malls or Rodeo Drive or Beverly Hills. And it's like, no, 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 LA is so much more than that. And um, it was really fun to get to just kind of go to the real places and let them play themselves. Did you have a favorite bar or a favorite cake or a favorite scene? I mean, what stood out for you? I think my favorite bar is a place called Los Candiles, um, which is sort of a nightclub type bar in like um, Glassell Park area on the east side. And it's just such a cool, they have all this neon, it's sort of like maximalist neon with this crazy neon floor and just it's an old older club and it's just so it's got so much soul it's where the it's where the friends all go to see a burlesque show um and i think that's just my favorite because it's so quintessential la just kind of wild and free and a little bit a little bit gritty but also just so festive um and I think my favorite cake was from um, the scene where they make it. They make a THC CBD cake, and it's uh, cherry flavored tincture that that one of the girls' moms buys them. So they make this cherry cake, and we we made very beautiful like marijuana leaves and cherry fondant decor around it. It was really beautiful, and a, like a marbled cherry inside. It was really, it was pretty awesome. And I'm watching it. I was like, I wish I could taste all the cakes as well. Um, they were so good, Sarah. They were so good. In terms of the takeaways, I mean, kind of as you said at the beginning, I guess maybe we start in one kind of place and one sort of genre, and it does take you on a bit of a roller coaster emotionally. And, and I think there's lots of things to sort of take away from that. For sure, kind of the nuances of, of female friendship and that everything's not always completely simple or linear or, you know, you know, just roses and unicorns or whatever, you know, it sometimes can be challenging and, and you know um we can all face hurdles but be stronger for it but also this thing of looking for Mr. Right you know so perhaps we're in sort of just in the rom-com territory perhaps it does reveal itself to be more about finding yourself and actually sometimes your your friendships can become more important than your romantic relationships so there's lots of takeaways it feels like that's what I was hoping people would take from it. I I love love. I love romance. I, you know, I think it's all fabulous, but I wanted this movie to be about something slightly different, which is like, sure, everybody wants to find that special someone and there's absolutely nothing wrong with that. But at the end of the day, this story really did turn into something different. And you're right. It's about finding yourself. It's about deciding who you're going to be and how you're going to live your life and um, not sort of needing anybody else to do that being able to do it for yourself. And, um, you know, I think that everybody has gone through a pretty wild few years with the pandemic and climate change, crazy weather events and political events. And I think people want to be uplifted, but they also don't want to be like, they don't want fluff necessarily. Cause we've all kind of learned a lot of lessons in these, in these last few years. And so I think it's important to give people some sophisticated meat to chew on while also trying to give them a good time. Yeah, I, th I think that's exactly what I sort of was taking away from it is, um, you know, it's something that's really emotionally resonant, but 
it doesn't feel completely twee and it's you know um it does feel like there's a lot of cynicism out there at the moment or everything's at least very polarized and so it's nice to have something that kind of balances something that feels grounded and realistic but also feels quite hopeful I mean I just wanted to bring all my girl mates and just tell them how much I love them after watching it I hope I hope people just want to like grab their best friend after this and you know not take any of this for granted yeah because you are you're right there's so much cynicism and so much just fatigue and we want to be buoyed but you know we've also seen so much it takes a lot to buoy us <laughs> at this point you know and you know having worked on things like um pitch perfect and you know now this film do you feel like we're in quite a good place now it does feel exciting that we are able to have these kind of female fronted you know i guess pitch perfect more of an out and out comedy um this in a slightly different genre but just having these really kind of like multi-layered female characters leading kind of films um it feels like we're in a really good place but maybe there's still some way to go i don't know what do you think I mean, I think you're exactly right. There's always some place to go, um, but it's a, such a great time for females in front of the camera and behind the camera and any female energy. I mean, anybody can have that sort of love for platonic friendship and that sort of softer side of life. And and um, I don't know, I just, not that women are soft, but you know what I'm saying? Like there's a, there's a, uh, there's a sort of, a, I think fatigue with the patriarchy and I think men feel it too. And, and, and I think it's just lovely that women are out there doing their thing and doing it as women, not having to sort of play by men's rules, whether they're the actors and the characters that we're telling stories about, whether the people behind the camera, we had so many women working on this movie. Um, and it just, yeah, it feels, feels more balanced and it's lovely. And there's always going to be somewhere to go, but I think we're, we are having a really good moment. And I love that. Well, thank you so much for sharing that. I mean, I'm out of time and I can't wait for everyone else to see the film. And yeah, it really touched a nerve with me and uh, it had me in bits, but also laughing. So I really enjoyed it. Thanks a lot. Oh, I'm so glad. Thank you, Sarah. Thank great you. Great to chat to you. Thanks a lot. Bye.